Today we're going to take a look how to uh, requeen a very aggressive hive. What you've got to do with a very aggressive hive, especially if it's been aggressive for a long while, it's best if you can do a split. But this is a, is a nook uh, that we did a split from. We took three frames of brood and we mm -hmm. three frames of blank foundation about six days ago. We went through it this morning and we've knocked down all the queen cells. So you got yourself a new queen and she'll come in a cage similar to this if you buy a queen or uh, your own cage if you, if you make your own queens. So you've got this, it doesn't matter, I found absolutely no difference if you take the attendance out or if you leave the attendance. And all you need to do um, to requeen a hive, to make a nook, um, if you're doing splits, uh, requeen an aggressive hive, whichever way you're doing it, you're going to be adding a new queen. And these bees have got to get used to that new queen being in there. And if it's young emerging brood, they've never known a queen, except for the queen that you're going to actually introduce to them. So you want to go in to your nook or your hive. You don't want a lot of smoke, you just want a wisp. It's literally that much smoke. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go through it and you're going to look for queen cells. Uh, as I say, we've got three frames of brood here, um, all young bees. We put it next to the parent hive, which is just over there, and all the older bees flew back to the original hive, so we're only left with young nurse bees in this one. So we'll just take out a frame of this blank foundation that we've put in. And you're going to go through each and every frame extremely carefully. And you're going to be looking for any signs of queen cells. If you leave any queen cells in there and you add a new queen, they'll either treat you as a two procedure or sometimes they might even swarm. So you've got to be very, very careful that you've got no queen cells or the start of any queen cells. If you can actually leave, leave it for nine days and then you know that they are hopelessly queenless and the, there's no way that they can actually raise any more queen cells but the nice are all covered in bees of these frames and there's brood there's very little larvae left because we, we've left it long enough and what you're going to do you're going to take your queen cage it's going to have candy in the bottom and it's going to have tabs on the on the bottom as well. Uh, some will have a, an oval tab if it's one of the yellow cages. These white cages have two tabs and you're going to leave them intact. If for any reason you buy a queen of somebody and they've reused the cage um, and it's not got the tabs on it, it's just got fondant, put some sellotape over there or a piece of gaffer tape and then you're going to want a nail or a toothpick and you're going to literally pop this in between two frames of brood like that and you're going to leave her there for 48 hours after 48 hours you'll go back in you'll lift your cage out and you can see how, how ready these are for a queen they're, they're literally all over the cage and you're going to break the tabs off and the bees are going to be able to eat their way through release the candy get through the candy and release that queen after another 48 hours after you've broken the tabs off, you want to lift this cage out without disturbing any of the frames. And you want to make sure that she's actually got out of the cage and she's in there. And then you want to put the lid back on and you want to walk away for a good five to seven days. You want to leave this hive alone. Fingers crossed she's in there and they've accepted it and she's lying. If for any reason you go in and you disturb it, sometimes the bees can take that disturbance and literally blame the queen for that disturbance and they'll end up bawling and killing the queen. So they may have accepted it but because you've been in and disturbed them it may ultimately result in the demise of this queen. 
if she's saying she's saying if she's not saying you're gonna to have to do it again you've you've got plenty of time um, if you've left it a little bit too late you can always add a frame of new boot uh, to your nook but you can see the, the, all the bees are coming up and they're surrounding this queen the, the sensitive pheromone already it doesn't take long one of the major problems people have requeening is they're too desperate to see if the queen's been accepted or they'll break the tabs off because they don't want to wait 48 mm -hmm. hours for the bees to actually get used to that phone on and start accepting it as their queen so they'll break the tabs off too early they'll reject the queen or they'll release the queen in there after the time that they should do and they'll go in because you're too eager to actually see if there's eggs and larvae in there and then what happens is you go in the, the next time and the supersede your cells everywhere because you've disturbed the queen or the, there's absolutely nothing there because you never actually got laying it's usually going to take the queen one or two days to start laying after she's actually gone out of the cage um, to actually settle down and, and find the feet so to say um, but as I said it's extremely simple we requeen lots of hives and lots of nooks and we make up lots of nooks here and we have a around 99.9% .9 success rate in requeening uh, it's extremely high but we leave the bees to it and that's what you've got to do so if it's an aggressive hive do a split lots of sealed brood uh, move the hive uh, a few feet away let all the foraging bees return to their old hive so you're left with nice young bees and emerging bees recombine using the newspaper method uh, then you've got lots of bees that'll protect that queen from the aggressive bees down below don't forget though remove the old queen and make sure there's no queen cells whatsoever down below and it's as simple as that is it's requeening it it's as simple as that, it's re, re -queening. You don't want to literally just come along and throw a queen in and hope for the best. Most of the time, it won't work like that. A little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and especially if you bought a queen, uh, 25, 35, 45, um, I've seen queens as high as 80 pounds uh, on the internet. If you put that sort of money into a queen, you certainly don't want her to get killed uh, without actually doing anything. You want it to be a successful queen for the next three years, at least. But literally, you can see how all these bees have clustered around this cage now. Uh, they've, they've picked up the pheromone of the queen. And once again, pop that nail through. Dangle it, entrance down. I know a lot of books say to do it sideways, it makes no difference. Um, and the manufacturers have put this convenient hoop on the top here. Press that in between two kids, two frames. It doesn't matter if these are, you actually crush the cage together because the side vents in these cages and the bees can feed that queen through that side vent. Two days later you come back, you break the tabs, two days later you lift that cage up to make sure that she's actually escaped and she's running around and you do not touch a single frame for five to seven days. I know it's very tempting to go in and see if she's, uh, she's okay and she's laying eggs. But you'll find a lot of the times they will kill the queen even though that she's laid some eggs. So let her lay some eggs and then they'll throw up her emergency queen cells. Put your hive back together. Don't forget if you have done a split, these are young bees, the foraging force is going to be very limited, so give these a feed as well. If you like these videos, uh, click on the subscribe button below. If you've got any comments or questions, you can leave those below as well. Um, I do try and answer every comment or question that people ask me. Uh,